the rotary engine is back. And while it may not be an RX-8 or RX-9, what it is, is very clever. Here we are again. It's been over two years since we looked at the Mazda MX-30, and now they have released the rotary-powered MX-30 REV. So let's have a look. Today, I'm going to explain what a rotary is, how it works, the benefits, the downsides, and everything in between. get most of what you know about a cylinder style engine. This is different. A rotary engine uses a triangular rotor housed in an oval chamber. And this has a variety of purposes. The first intakes, the second compresses, and the third combusts, as well as exhausts. This continuous motion creates a gyro effect, making the engine amazingly smooth. The most famous use of this engine is the ludicrous 787B racing Le Mans car, which up until a few years ago was the only Japanese car ever to win Le Mans. And it sounded like a swarm of angry hornets invading planet Earth. So let's talk about some of the benefits of that engine. First off, it's simple really simple. It's made using only three moving parts, which means that it's got hundreds less than a regular engine. Those moving parts are the rotor, the crankshaft, and of course the gear set. This, mechanically anyway, actually makes it very reliable. And hold your pitchforks in the comment section. I know people are going to talk to me about RX-8s of old, but we'll get there, don't worry. I've already mentioned just how smooth it can be. It's like driving with butter or on butter. Something to do with butter, I'm sure. The engine is actually tiny, but chucks out so much power. Downside, traditionally, is of course, fuel economy. Especially if you just ran the car off of a rotary engine. It doesn't generate as much torque or sort of pulling power as a regular engine does. And if it's designed poorly, then it will eat fuel while powering the car. And then of course, there's oil. Oil is mixed in the fuel to help lubricate various components as the rotors spin. And then, of course, if you have a very big rotor, then that will chew up more oil. And there is also durability. If the apex seals on the tips of the rotors are made with a cheap material, they can wear out and reliability goes down. Luckily, Mazda have had a fair few years to be able to make sure that most of these complications, if not all, have been eliminated. So how have Mazda addressed the downsides? Well, it's got one rotor and one rotor only. It's only 830 cc's and it is tiny. Look, uh, that, that's it. That's all it is. This means you need far less oil to lubricate it. And because it won't be in use all the time and it's not actually moving the car, it's only used for charging the batteries, the apex seal and the oil issues are pretty much resolved. But what about fuel economy. Well, it's kind of a weird one, to be honest. You see, when you're pulling along something very heavy, such as a car, the lack of torque makes it very inefficient. But when it's attached to something really light, say a dynamo for charging an electric car, it all starts to make a little bit more sense. You see, a rotary engine loves to spin. It's kind of their thing. Hey, that rhymed. And to generate electricity, a dynamo, it needs to be rotating either the magnet or the copper around the magnet very, very fast, or a combination of the two. The faster you go, generally, the more electricity is produced. So despite being a plug-in hybrid, it's more of a plug-in with an onboard generator. An O-glev, if you will. So if you're enjoying the video thus far, uh, make sure you subscribe and leave a like. It helps us out massively and it's free. You can unsubscribe at any time at all if you want to. The car has a seemingly low range of between around 53 and 68 miles, but that means it has a very small battery, which means the charging time is actually laughable. Only four hours and 50 minutes on a domestic socket. <laughs> and that's around one hour 20 or one hour 30 on uh, AC three phase, and it can go even faster than that if you plug it into a rapid charger. Because of the range extender, you don't actually need a huge battery, which obviously helps save on costs as well. And the fuel economy, as I said before, is a little bit weird. Because the engine isn't actually really powering the car, it's only charging the battery, 
Yeah, it technically has an MPG of 282 miles to the gallon. Technically 282.3 if you want to get pedantic about it, which is absolutely mental. This car belongs to one of the sales controllers at Eden Mazda in Taunton, and he was telling me he got this car in the middle of November. And so far, it is now the, what is it, the 13th of December, Ben? And he has only put in 30 pounds worth of fuel since he got the car, which is crazy. <laughs> the car also has three driving modes, and as ever, with this car, they're not normal driving modes. Usually, in an expensive sports car, this will sharpen up the throttle response, add more power, lower the car, and stiffen the suspension as well. In a cheaper car, it might change the throttle and the steering. At an EV, it will usually add more power or add more throttle response, um, and that's kind of it, really. In this car, though, normal mode delivers a normal EV experience, but the rotor will kick in whenever more power is needed, so as soon as you put your foot down, wow, that's quick. As soon as you put your foot down, it will start spinning up, and you'll hear it just a very faint hum in the background as it's going. EV mode will keep the car using the electricity as long as possible and only cut in when extreme acceleration is required. Other than that, you're free to run it down. And then there is charge mode. Charge mode is mostly the same as normal mode, but will kick in a little bit more often as the battery depletes itself, keeping you topped up for those longer journeys. And you can even set what reservoir of electric power you have when this system kicks in. It's all very clever stuff. The details are rather exquisite too. The car retains these cork insert, and even though this interior is now around three years old, it is gorgeous. I love the details in here. It's got a floating console right in the middle here, which gives you loads of space, but keeps everything nearby so you feel cockpitted as you drive. And then, of course, you've got the wonderful seat inserts and the rear hinged doors as well. These babies mean you get slightly less rear legroom than you do in its sister car, the CX-30, upon which is, this is based, but they do make the car ever so slightly safer and easier to do a few things, certainly. Let me show you, let me show you. So you open up the rear doors like so, one finger pull on this bad boy and it goes forward. And then cut with car seat in there, you can just lift child, put inside without having anything here to get in your way. There's no middle pillar, which makes it easier, which I would know if I had children. The specifications start with the prime line. You get a DC socket with rapid charging up to 50 kilowatt hours. You got regenerative braking with five modes. You get 18 inch gray metallic alloy wheels. The B pillars are in satin black and you get integrated electric heated folding door mirrors with lights and all sorts and bits and pieces inside that. You get a black front grille, you get front rain sensing wipers, you get automatic lights. They're all LED lights as well. There's no halogens around here. The car even comes as standard with high beam control. So you don't even need to dip when something's coming the other way. You get front and rear parking sensors and a gloss black roof as well. Interior wise, you get a light gray cloth trim with a seven inch touchscreen display and that works all of the heating and stuff, but there's separate buttons for things that you want to use regularly as well. So you're not just fiddling around there looking for what's what, you can actually just press the buttons too. You get connected services, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all of the usual amendments, and of course, USB connectable as well. You get Mazda's eight point inch multimedia infotainment display as well. And you can use this dial here, which again, once you get used to, is kind of faster and better than using a touchscreen. And it's positioned just below the windshield line as well, so it's always in your peripheral vision. You get five years of free sat-nav updates, you get climate control, air conditioning, front electric windows, you get radar-guided cruise control, and because it's technically an automatic, it's stop and go, so you can go all the way to zero, all the way up as high as you want. You also get, as standard, a windscreen-projected active color head-up display. On the base model, the base one, of course you get blind spot monitoring, which is in your head up display and your mirrors as well. You get emergency lane keeping, blind spot assist, road keep assist, intelligent speed assist, lane keep assist system with lane departure warning, remote central locking and dead locking. And it's actually got a rear camera as standard too. But if you wanted a little bit more, the mid range version might be to your fancy as is literal mid-spec 
Goldilocks effect car is always kind of what I feel is the best of the bunch, which is why it has the one I got. Definitely not justifying it to myself, definitely not missing the Bose sound system in this one. But let's talk about the exclusive line, shall we? You get 18 inch black diamond cut alloy wheels. You get an auto dipping driver side door mirror. The B pillars are now in piano black and you get rear privacy glass as well. You get light stone leather on the outside of the seats with a light gray interior insert as well. The driver's side has a memory electric height adjustment, lumbar support, basically everything that you need in a seat. That will also link up to the head up display and the mirrors. So you can have one key with your partner's position and one key with your position. No problem whatsoever. Program to the keys and to a button as well. You get a frameless auto dipping rear view mirror. The seats at the front are now heated and you get smart keyless entry as well. Hold your horses though, because we finally have this one, the Makoto. And I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but there we go, is what it is. This adds many features over the exclusive and it's what we're driving today. Get a 360 degree all round top down view camera. You get front wiper de-icer. So basically the windscreen wiper spindles sit on a little heated pad. So you should never rip your windscreen wipers off if it's a very snowy day. You get full signature adaptive LED lights. These dip individual LEDs in the bulb so that any oncoming traffic will remain in darkness, but the rest of the road will remain illuminated. You get a power tilt slide sunroof as well. You get a heated steering wheel, which is uh, really rather comforting. And of course you get Mazda's rather signature 12 speaker Bose sound system with a subwoofer so that you can have a small concert in here. You also get uh, cruising traffic support, driver monitor, front, cr front cross traffic alert. I think it's time we talked about the drive. This is a weird one for me because I'm so used to driving the standard MX-30 and it feels very similar. That is to say it's smooth, it corners well. It feels like there's maybe a little bit more front end grip and you do get <laughs> a little bit more of a more exciting noise when you throw it down a little bit. It's a low rumble that goes into a high fizz as the rotary speeds up. I love the power down. You kind of get this sort of, you know, that bass drop that you hear on film trailers. That's kind of what's going on. In terms of the drive itself, the acceleration is a little bit better, but that's more feeling as opposed to anything else. Maybe it's slightly smoother as well. I can't tell you how odd this is, driving it, what is essentially what feels like your car, but something else under it. <laughs> really does mix the sound of the EV and the sound of the rotary together to create quite a pleasant hum. Impressive. And if you want to find out more about the MX-30 REV or the MX-30, there is a link in the video description and you can click that and it should give you some more info. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.